because there's times you sit for meditation and there may still be the play of thoughts through the mind, even as there is this increase inside you where you feel something more, something stillness, something deep, something calls you, and you still experience different thoughts are flowing through your mind, but yet a greater and greater portion of your awareness, of your attention, gets absorbed in something sweet, something formless, something indescribable, something that you really just don't even know. What is this that I'm experiencing in this stillness and yet vibrancy deep within? As your attention gets deeply absorbed, more deeply absorbed, more deeply absorbed, the thoughts and outer sensations and perceptions may in fact just seem to recede in a kind of distance. You may still hear at a kind of far away way the call of birds in the trees outside or a car going down the street or indeed the sound of your own breath, yet your breath becoming more refined and still in that depth of meditation. And then perhaps for just a moment, the paradoxical state in which everything comes to rest, everything stops. And yet nothing stops because your awareness is now entirely absorbed in its own depth, in its own mysteriousness of, of, of we call it self-referential consciousness. You stand in that moment in reference only to yourself, to the great self. You stand in reference to the Mahashunya, the great emptiness in the cave of the heart, which is yet at the same time the Hurnatwa, the great fullness, that state of a kind of divine suspension deep inside. Everything has come to rest. It seems as if everything else has disappeared. Where has it gone? In that moment, you don't care because your awareness is savoring something so mysterious, tremendous, fascinating, awe-inspiring, magnificent. You may savor it perhaps only for a moment and then something else will arise in your awareness and your activity in your awareness will once again resume. Or it may be that someday, for a longer period of time, you remain absorbed in a transcendental silence, a space in which there is no thought, no memory, no separate perception, and yet you are perfectly content and fulfilled this is the Turiya state, the fourth state of consciousness. In my own awareness, I've, I've inwardly labeled this the, the moon of awakened consciousness. This goes back many, many years, a very long time ago, 53 years. It's hard to even say it. Actually, it's harder to even recognize how life has passed in the, in the daily cultivation of meditation. Living in the present moment of the unfolding wholeness of life, even as the journey of life has continued and continues to this very moment. It's remembering those first moments of meditation and the first words, as it were, of encouragement from my first meditation teacher who said to all of us in the room, not to me, just individually, very soon as you practice your meditation, you will begin to experience a place where everything stops. You will have the experience of samadhi. Now, I was a teenager when I learned my practice, and I had a certain kind of arrogance of know-it-allness that characterizes teenagers. It's one of the sure manifestations of ignorance when a person says that they know everything or feels inwardly that they know everything. Uh, it's really, and I remember thinking to myself, yeah, I've read the books. Samadhi only comes after God knows many lifetimes of practice and so on. How is it that 
my teacher is telling me that I will have experiences of samadhi very soon. And yet, this is exactly what began to happen. I've talked about this many times, but I was remembering yesterday as I was just jotting some notes uh, in one of my journals about all this and thinking, yes, it's exactly as he said, it came to pass on a very ordinary day. I had been meditating probably not more than a year, a year and a half. I came to do my afternoon meditation. I was still an undergraduate in college and really uh, just a very modest house. There were six of us who were living in this house. We're all practitioners of deep meditation. And so as we would come back uh, before supper, each person would go into their room to do their practice of meditation. And in a very routine kind of way, carrying my laundry back from the laundromat and preparing for an evening of study and of writing papers, whatever I had to do, and then saying, yes, now for just a little bit, the blissfulness of deep meditation. And on that particular day, which I do remember was a very cold November day, um, entering into this state that I have subsequently characterized as the moon of awakened consciousness, in which, as I have just been saying, everything stopped. Everything stopped. And yet what was there was this, it was this pearl-like radiance of the moon. It was not harsh, it was not harsh solar light. It was this nectar light that was so consoling and beautiful and all absorbing and fascinating. And really for a very long time on that particular day, so many years ago, so many decades ago, I sat wrapped in the fascination of seeing the light of the self as exactly as described in this Yoga Sutra that I quoted from today, sorrowless Vishoka, filled with light, and that light having a healing quality and then also an energizing, enlivening, vitalizing, refining, strengthening, orienting, guiding quality. It revealed itself simply in that moment as silent, vibrating consciousness itself. And yet afterwards, receiving the longer gift of it, realizing that something vitalizing, something refining, had happened inside me, something that had released limitations, had taken away inner obstructions, had removed at least some portion of darkness, some portion of stress, some portion of sorrow or grief or disorientation or a sense of, of limitation in life and had opened my attention to that which I have continued to cultivate all of my life through my practice. This reality is there for everyone. This is the great teaching of the tradition. It's not any new news. The reality of the self eternally pulsates in the space of the heart. The issue simply is, do we want that? Do we want to cultivate that? Do we want to make that a priority? Do we want to make that a commitment do we want to explore the merging and yielding into that luminous Agni Shoma? It is fiery and yet nectarian, enlivening, anupranana, vitalizing, filled with life force, filled with life breath, filled with awareness and clarity, filled with that which we need in life. That must be refreshed every day of life that nourishes us in our life and supports us and protects us and instills into us a divine orientation and a, a divine feeling of connection and a feeling of great meaningfulness, purposefulness, intensity of, of, of just of life itself in its most essential way. Our meditation practice grants us so many gifts. 